Coach, you, uh, we went through this, obviously, in Utah, but just, uh, you know, there'll be a presentation here tonight and a celebration, uh, you know, to see maybe an opportunity for Flames fans to kind of give their salute to Captain. Uh, what do you think uh, is going to be the reaction here tonight? Uh, from the fans? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, just I, the salute. Yeah. I think it'll be a strong one. I mean, he's played a 1,000 games for the same same franchise, same organization. So um, I've talked about loyalty before. I think it goes both ways. And I think people recognize that. Like sometimes a player has a choice um, and he's always chosen the Flames. Um, and I think fans will recognize that and they'll give him the, the salute he probably deserves. Ron, did, when you coached him in Kelowna, did you see a thousand games in that kid? Uh, no, why? But you don't even think of that at the time, right? Um, he was a skinnier guy when he first came in, and you never know how a player is going to react because he was highly touted. Uh, he came in after the World Juniors, so you're always kind of wondering: Is he going to rock the boat with our team a little bit here? Because he's a high first-round pick, and everybody's talked about him. But he came in and he tried to just fit in with our players. He didn't want any part of the center of the attention, nothing. And I think you still see him that way today, which I find just awesome. When, right. when Jacob Arson was traded in the summer, there were obviously questions about whether you guys had a number one goalie there. I'm just curious how, how you would assess the goaltending your group has gotten. I, so far. I think our goalies have been good. I mean, the last two games aside, I mean, a lot of that isn't on them. I mean, it's for me, a lot of the way the team played in front of them, I don't think we were nearly good enough. So I, I think both of our guys have been excellent for us to start the year. All right, uh, New Jersey media. Just to recap what's happened lately, you mentioned the team in the last two didn't play well, but yeah. what, what specifically are you addressing for tonight's game? Um, in relation in to how we have to play, to the focus totally on how we have to play. So I, I feel like we got away from it a little bit the last couple of games. Um, and for our team to be at its best, we have to do a really good job of, of keeping numbers above the puck. That's something that's important for us. And uh, I think, one, it helps limit um, the chances that we give up against. But I just feel like um, when we do that, the rhythm of our play, the pace of our team game is so much better. It allows us to play a little bit more downhill. Um, and I think we're a harder team to play against when we play that way. If you had the answer, you'd be several times a millionaire. Why does it slip? Like, what happens when it slips? You, you, want, you make this identification of how you have to play. Yeah. You play in the yeah. first five games or so, and then it just kind of drifts. Yeah, sometimes it's uh, because it's hard. Uh, I think that's a really one of the big things that eventually the players understand that there is a certain way we have to play, and if we get away from it, this is what we end up with. Um, but the way we ask the guys to play is hard all the time. And if that deviates or that slips, then it's, it's not a recipe for success for us. So I think that's a little bit why, because it's not easy and we're trying to change a few, few of the habits that we've had. What was the message to Sam Hanzak as he sort of goes, goes to the Wranglers? Just keep doing what he's been doing. Like, unfortunately, he ran into that injury. He was playing really well for us, and um, we wanted him to get back up to speed with a lot of puck touches and, and get himself kind of to the point he was throughout camp in the early portion of the season for us. So did a really good job. We talked about him a lot. Um, I know we'll see him back here soon. And with Matt Coronado obviously back up, what's... What do you want to see from him with this opportunity? Um, for Matt to be Matt. I mean, I, I think that's the one thing you always feel like whenever someone's brought up that's a first-round pick, everybody puts the pressure of the world on his shoulders. It's not that at all. He's just got to come up and be himself, and um, we feel like that's good enough. Can you just say something about what Jacob meant to this organization during his, his tenure here? We're, uh, that's over and done with for us, so we're just focusing on our team game tonight. What is a uh, allowed Ball and Anderson to kind of be the one steady pairing all year. Yeah, it's funny. We didn't know what was going to happen with those two in exhibition because uh, Baller had a nagging little thing that we wanted to clear up. So we never knew if they would have that chemistry, but um, they do. And I think a little of it is because you've got one guy that feels like he can get himself a little bit more involved offensively and the other guy um, has a pretty good understanding of how he has to play as a defenseman. Uh, and that doesn't mean he's going to be leading the rush all the time. So he's typically, if you want to call him a safety blanket for Ras, I'm not sure, but they seem to feed off of each other with the, the different styles that the two play. Can I ask you a little bit more on Ball, just as far as 10 sure. games in and what you, your impressions of him have been? Yeah, um, very positive. I, I mean, he's a, a big body, which is something that we were looking for on the back end. So when he became available in the trade, we were pretty excited about having him. He's a younger guy that fits in kind of with our, our age category. Um, and in talking to former coaches, uh, they all liked what the 
I guess the direction or the path that he was headed. So they, everybody felt they needed upside there. Um, for me, I think because he's got a little more opportunity maybe to play bigger minutes and against better people, he's feeling really good about himself now too. So the size that he's playing with, I think he's anticipating the play really well. So um, he's able to get a stick in the mix a lot. And then he's, he's been physical, a little bit more physical than I was um, expecting him to be for us. Does he deserve some credit for the start that Rasmus is off to? Yeah, I would say for sure. Most I would I would assume most partners would always credit the other guy if, if they're having some success. So I would hope Ras would say that, yeah. You may not totally have an answer for this. Roy Karens was just named AHL's Player of the Month. Have, have you been sort of impressed with how some of these young guys with the Wranglers do seem? I mean, we've seen Clark Bishop scoring goal after goal. With, they, do, they do seem like they're... Push him to be on your guys' radar. Yeah, a little different with Clark and Rory. Clark's been around for a little bit, so he is one of those guys that um, um, he knows what he has to be, so really good handle on his identity, and, and he's been a pro for a lot of years, where Rory's been a guy that, um, you know, like some of the other players that, you know, everything seems to be stacked against him. He just keeps believing in himself and pushing, and he's found a way to, um, one, be around the net and score a lot of goals for the Wranglers. So um, he, he's, I think when you probably look at him, there's a lot of belief in his ability, and he's going to keep showing that until he gets his opportunity.